me. I'd say happy Friday, but my internet is completely out. So although I am recording this on Friday, you may not get this on your screens for another day or two at the very latest, I'm hoping. But I hope you're enjoying your weekend or I hope you enjoyed your weekend, depending on when this goes up and when you are seeing this. During this video, I will be working on another illustration of Gabby Hanna for the third time now since she's been an interesting hot topic to discuss for a while. While I draw this character and talk about what's happening on the Gabby side of the internet, I'd like to encourage you to grab a sketchbook or an iPad or a paintbrush and make some art with me if you feel like it. If you do not know what to draw or paint, I do offer an archive of downloadable coloring pages that I drew on my Patreon and they're currently all themed around animals and nature, but I will continue to upload new drawings that will include other subject matter as well and my Patreon link is in my bio. And also remember to like and subscribe if this casual art drama atmosphere is something you're into and if you want this stuff to keep popping up on your sub box and recommended. <laughs> so today I have a few major thoughts on Gabby. And to make these thoughts clear, I do need to briefly touch on the current situation between herself and Jesse Smiles and the phone calls that were recently released by Jesse. I don't want to go into it too deep, however, because there are a ton of other creators who have already discussed this deeply and in a lot of detail, and I don't think I really have anything better to add on. So if you don't know the details, I'll link some videos that I thought explained everything very well in my description. And I also don't want to go too deep into it because I don't want to contribute to all the headlines and the clickbait titles about Jessie Smiles. I'm not going to be putting her name in the title. I'm not going to be putting her name in the tags. She posted her phone call with Gabby and logged off and now looks like she's taking a break from the internet. So I just want to leave her alone and hope she can find some calmness in her real life off the internet with the least amount of stress that is possible given the circumstances. I will also be looking into Gabby's social media presence during the aftermath of the phone calls and how she's presenting herself online as there's a ton of eyes on her waiting for her to address the Jesse situation and the phone calls. This will include her TikToks, her Instagram stories, trolling videos, promoting her series, her unfollowing her fans and her stands on Twitter, um, unfollowing her mutuals who are standing up for what's right, including myself who was mutuals with Gabby on Twitter before the other day. And I even had multiple positive interactions with her online last year, um, up until yesterday when I saw that I was blocked for denouncing my support for what she said in the phone calls. So for context for the whole video, I will briefly summarize my understanding of the phone calls, but please note that my summary is highly biased toward Jesse, so please listen to the full phone conversation to get the full understanding if you would like to. In the phone call that both parties consented to having recorded, Gabby explained to Jesse that she indeed spoke to Jesse's on more than one occasion after the news broke about the SA, which was new information to Jesse. Gabby admitted that she attended a party where Jesse's was present at, and she heard him out, listened to his side of the story, just to quote, defend Jesse and try to catch him in a lie. This admission was very heartbreaking to Jesse, that it led to her actually having a panic attack and she needed to end the phone call and call Gabby back later. Gabby also reminded Jesse at one point that nobody believed her at first and Gabby had a personal experience where her friend was wrongly accused of SA. Jesse understood this as Gabby's justification for Gabby being a apologist. There's a lot more details that I missed in my summary, so please once again listen to the full phone calls yourself if you are able to, and also please watch the videos I have linked in my description if you'd like the full context and more educated opinions than mine. So after these phone calls were released, Gabby basically is treating her social media like nothing is happening and she's acting completely normal. She's been avoiding any acknowledgement that these phone calls even exist on the internet and she's acting like nothing bad is happening. She's posting like normal, training in the gym, singing, and continuing to troll since there are a lot of eyes on her right now. She's posting about her workouts, like I said, and some of her posts include emojis of like boxing gloves, so she's trying to promote how she's getting ready to box people, I guess, um, and using that as a way to distract from what's going on and using that as a way to pretend nothing is going on as far as what I'm seeing that is. And she's posting more singing videos where she's making 
weird, funny faces for attention like she's been doing a lot recently. Again, I think this is considered more of her trolling videos. And she's acting completely unbothered, even though she's absolutely been seeing what people are saying about her online, since she's blocking anybody who has been taking a stance against her. On my personal Twitter account, I've actually had multiple public interactions with Gabby where I've shown nothing but support toward her and I felt like I should also publicly announce that I don't support what Gabby said on those phone calls released by Jesse. At first I was a little bit hesitant and it definitely took me a couple days because many of my mutuals on my personal Twitter account were at the time fellow Gabby fans and I didn't want to anger anybody who I've been friendly with in the past and I knew that I was also risking the positive online relationship and I use the word relationship very loosely since after all, all I was was just a fan of Gabby and she followed me back. But I knew that I would be risking my online relationship with Gabby and I knew I would risk being blocked or unfollowed even though I worded my thoughts with no malice whatsoever. But I ultimately decided that since I made my stance known on my Paint and Sip account that I should really make a stance known on my personal account again since that's where I've always tweeted my support toward Gabby and that's where many of my mutuals are Gabby fans. Last year, I posted a couple videos on my personal YouTube channel where I critiqued some of Gabby's paintings and I also bought Gabby's second poetry book, Dandelion, and I did an art critique on her illustrations. So I'm unable to find the original comment on my video, so I don't know if Gabby deleted it or if she blocked me on YouTube as well as Twitter. I'm not sure, but I do have a screenshot that I took as soon as it happened. So Gabby saw my art critique about her paintings. And her first comment said, OMG, aren't you just the cutest? And then she said, ah, the part about potentially helping me with my art. I definitely am going to be applying the stuff you said, especially when it comes to the background paint. Like, sure, I should have started with that. Ha ha ha. The part about you being a fan now is actually so heartwarming. You're adorable. I'm looking forward to your future critiques. So, like, I pretty much fangirled over that. And, like, I made a whole video about, like, how grateful I was that she saw but I have since privated that video where I fangirled over her comment because it was very embarrassing and I literally actually cried of happiness or just fangirliness. I don't even know, but it was embarrassing, so I, I privated that video. And beyond anything, I'm just very, very, very grateful that Gabby listened to it, watched it, took in all my critiques. <laughs> I am so grateful that she literally spent her time listening to me. <laughs> the point is, is that Gabby saw my video about her art critique and my critiques were like sandwiched, positive, negative, positive kind of critique. So it wasn't mean or anything. So luckily she didn't get mad at the things I said, but yeah, she saw my video and she commented and she then decided to go on live soon after that live stream so i was watching her live stream and she was just kind of basically hanging out and like singing and stuff and so i left a super chat once again thanking her for watching my video and taking in my critiques so she saw my super chat and she paused her song to say oh my gosh sienna i'm obsessed with you and here's the clip of that. Wait, Sierra Lane says, thank you so much for watching and commenting on my YouTube video about your art. Oh my God, that's Sienna! Or Sienna! Yo, Sienna, I just watched like more of your videos yesterday. I'm obsessed with you. And once again, I was fangirling. I screen recorded it. I posted it on Twitter, on my TikTok, Facebook, etc. I was like a pretty big fan at this point. Like I was like, all right, like Gabby's my girl. I freaking love her. She has my full support. You know, that whole thing. So by that point, or soon after that, I don't remember the exact timeline, but Gabby ended up following me back on Twitter because there was one day where she was like, hey, comment under this, I'm following my mutuals back, or I'm following my fans back. And I left my comment, reminded her, hey, I'm the person who made the art critique that you watched, and she commented saying, BB, and followed me back that day. So then, with, with how Twitter works, then she was able to see my tweets, even if I didn't tag her 
or mention her name, I would just show up on her timeline at that point. And at the, I was like, I didn't think she would ever see anything that I posted because she was following a bunch of people and I'm not sure she even like pays attention to her timeline or whatever. So I was once again shocked and fangirled when she saw one of my tweets and commented under it. So somebody left a critical comment under one of my videos. I believe it was the video that I privated where I basically cried and talked about how I'm now a fan of Gabby, which was again, super embarrassing. But this comment said, you're sweet but gullible. Can't subscribe now because of this video. Celebrities or people in power use personal connections to influence and take control of situations. That's what I see. Now she has you as a fan and you cannot judge her actions as before, like you said, because of that nagging personal connection. Same thing happened to that girl that didn't think Gabby would see the tweet. She's referring to Hello Alicia at that point, I believe. You're allowed to say Brad Pitt was awful in his newest movie. Just because it might hurt his feelings doesn't mean you have to censor yourself. That's the actual price of fame, wealth, blah blah. Your image, outside self, is almost essentially public property. Was excited for a new artist to follow. Found a sucker excited that a slub graced their presence instead. Yuck. And Gabby's reply to this said, The irony in this is they're the ones telling you how to feel or act or think. All I did was respond to a fellow YouTuber who gave healthy, constructive criticism, and now I am manipulative and toxic and you're gullible. Welcome to my life last year. So besides me being a cringy fangirl and being super excited that Gabby watched my video and took my art critiques, I'm not sure that I actually really did anything wrong in that situation. Um, I'm, this person's comment was definitely constructive criticism and some parts of it were true and made a lot of sense but at the same time like I'm a real person and I can change my opinions as I, I have now that uh, like the situation we're talking about now is all about how I changed my opinion but yeah that was basically the whole summary of my quote, online relationship with Gabby, like I said, I'm using the term relationship very loosely since literally all I am is just a fan who she followed back and interacted with like three times at the most. <laughs> but all of that is beside the point. The point that I'm trying to make here is about how Gabby is treating her loyal fans on the internet right now, now that a lot of them are taking a stance against her. So separated from all the Gabby, Jesse drama right now, drama is not the right word, the situation, I have seen Gabby posting her paintings on Twitter mixed in with all of this other drama that's going on. And I actually really think that Gabby improved immensely as a painter. And I actually really love her new style. And seeing her newest paintings on my timeline, I was really visually attracted to them. But I just couldn't fully let myself enjoy them, knowing what I know now about her phone conversation with Jesse Smiles. So that's exactly what I decided to say on Twitter. So on my Paint and Sip account, I simply said, I feel like I'm starting to understand the struggle of separating the art from the artist. I think Gabby's paintings are really amazing objectively, but I feel like I can't enjoy them, let alone support the artwork after hearing those phone calls. So like I said earlier, I went to my personal Twitter account and retweeted what I said on my Paint and Sip account, adding the comment that this is my other Twitter account, but I'd like to share this thought on my main as well. I've never understood the struggle of separating the art from the artist before this. So I posted my retweet and then the next day I saw that not only had Gabby unfollowed me, but she had also blocked me on my personal Twitter the Twitter where we were mutuals, but she did not block me on my paint and sip Twitter where I actually made the statement originally. And I feel like that in itself is a little bit strange. And this is total speculation here, but I feel like her blocking me on my personal account only, but not on my drama account, was a way of her trying to maybe punish me by taking away her follow. Otherwise, I feel like she probably would have also blocked my drama account because again, that's where I actually made the statement. I say this because Gabby has been unfollowing and blocking a bunch of her fans and some of her stands even, I'm sure, who have actually taken a public critical stance against her. So 
It may be a way of her saying, see guys, if you say anything bad or critical about me, I'm going to take away my mutual privileges or something. <laughs> and I'd like to make it known that there's no actual mutual privilege. I literally just like made that term up right now, but... <laughs> But because there's no actual benefit that comes from being followed by Gabby on social media, except for maybe the gratification that comes from having a large creator know who you are and know you exist if you're a fan. And as I've said before, Gabby is absolutely allowed to follow, unfollow, or block anybody she wants. But I feel like the reasons and the motivations behind blocking certain people, including her fans and her mutuals, is trying to make a statement like, see, I can take something away from you as a punishment for criticizing me. Like we saw when she unfollowed her fan because they DM'd her, kindly reminding her about Trisha Paytas's pronouns. So as I said before, Gabby is posting on social media like nothing is happening, everything is fine and good, but we do know for a fact that she does see what we are saying because she is blocking people who are saying those things. And so that's basically proof that she is reading our tweets. And it's been refreshing to see a lot of Gabby's fans take to Twitter and just say like, hey, I don't support this. Gabby, I wish you would comment on this. Gabby, I wish you would stop pretending that it's not happening. It is good to see that a lot of people aren't just going to blindly keep following her. There are definitely some people who are still blindly following her, still and blindly supporting her, but it is good to see that a lot of people are taking a critical stance against her, even if it means getting unfollowed and blocked by their favorite. So what do you think of all of this? Have you been blocked by Gabby? I heard she's been blocking a ton of people, so you pr maybe you probably have if you're someone who talked about her critically on Twitter. And just let me know what you think about the whole situation, and um, yeah, I... I drew Gabby here as you can see and I would like to know what you drew as well or if you colored in one of my patreon coloring pages if you did and here is some of the artwork that my viewers made during my previous videos I always like to share two or three of these at the end of each of my videos so if you'd like to share what you made Make sure to post a picture to Twitter or Instagram and tag me in it so I can see it. And with that, please subscribe if you enjoy this kind of format of a video. And I hope you like it and stay creative and see you next time.